Hey everyone, so today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the High B R6 Gen 3, not to be confused with the High B R6 that was released about, I want to say a year and a half or two years ago, or the R6 Pro. So this is supposed to be the continuation or the next generation of the R6, not the R6 Pro. And it's also probably an evolution of the R5 or R5 Pro. And pretty much this one, the High BR3 Pro that I did a review on like almost a year ago. And I have this here because I wanted to show you guys or talk to you guys about why I got this to not necessarily replace this, but why I got this to use over this thing right here, which is still a great player, this High BR3 Pro. So not to waste any more time with the intro, but let's get on with this review. Okay, so normally in the review, I'll do like a history about the company Hybee, but I'm not going to do it here because I'll, I already did it for the Hybee R3 Pro. If you guys haven't seen my Hybee R3 Pro, I'll put a link in the description and there are timestamps so you guys can see the history about Hybee R3 Pro. But in general, in short, Hybee has been around since 2011 and they were a research and development company first before they started making their own digital audio players. And they started off with making the Hybee OS, which is an OS or operating system that they lend out to other companies. In particular, and I could be wrong, so correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, they lend out their operating system, the Hybee OS, to other music players or other companies that make music players that don't want to make their own operating system, like HiDiz is one of them, uh, Cohen, uh, Ibeso, and prob probably Shandling, among others. And that's Hybee as a company in general. So as far as, uh, first of all, why am I upgrading from the hy R3 Pro to the hy R6 Gen 3? In general, because I wanted a larger screen, which this has, and I wanted a faster operating system, which this has, and a stronger, stronger Bluetooth, stronger Wi-Fi connection, which this has over the hy R3. As far as like size goes, you can see there's a really big difference. If I were to take these two out and about, it would probably be this. But I wouldn't be so opposed to taking this out and about. And as you can see, it's in its case. Okay, so before we get into specs and features, let's go over the short unboxing that I did about a week ago. Hey everyone, in today's video, we're just going to unbox real quick, hopefully, because I have a little bit of a cold, so I want to try to make this quick, and uh, I'm going to start doing my reviews a little bit differently. I'm going to include both the unboxing and the review all at once, and then through the magic of video editing, you guys will see the review at the same time, although it's going to be like maybe a week or so later, a week or two later. So in this box is the big brother of this. This is my high beat. R3 Pro and I love this little player but it got like a few firmware updates and then there's some things that I didn't like which I will talk to you guys in the review but for now let's like I said unbox this real quick so this is the package that it comes in an indiscreet box so whoever sees the box won't really know it's like an expensive digital audio player although it does have high bees kentucky address on here which is a little bit of a concern if uh you know if you have neighbors that know about high bee or hibby anyways let's open it up so upon opening the box we are greeted with this high bee r6 gen 3 as you guys can see, high resolution video audio player. It's uh, wrapped in plastic, so we're probably gonna have to uh, remove this plastic. Nothing much, it's a pretty understated box. It just has the name of the video player, and then here on the sides also, and then bottom and top, nothing. And then on the back is like a, then on the back is like High B's address. It says high resolution music player. And then they have their addresses written in English. I'm gonna, I wanna say Chinese and uh, some other languages. The player is like in this sleeve right here. That's the outer sleeve and here's the actual box. We lift the box. We are presented with the actual player right there. So there's two colors of this. There's black and silver on Amazon or on their website. It's called Titanium Gray. So I got the silver or titanium gray version. And uh, before we look at the player, let's see what's in this other box. So right here on my left 
inside the other box. It looks like uh, the case to keep your R63 safe if you just in case if you accidentally drop it or you don't want it getting scratched because this whole thing I believe is like glass glass and aluminum there's a tempered glass on the front and tempered glass on the back and then in this little box oh wait what else do we get I'm supposed to get something else oh yeah here it is from watching a few reviews it already comes with a screen protector but here's an extra one that comes with it and then uh you get your manual right there quick start guide and then in this box what do we get this is probably for the cable so you get a very nice and thick uh usb-c to usb-c cable and that's pretty much it let's take a look at the player the player is uh surrounded by this foam type of protective cutout that fits the player in there's this little tab right here to pull the player out boom and man this is beautiful it's so cold to the touch and then you just remove the plastic right here boom and move the other plastic right here and there we go let's uh, compare it to its little brother the R3 Pro and as you can see it's way bigger so one of the reasons why I got this like I said I'll be telling you guys in a full review but this player just got released this year and it comes with the latest version well at least for players it's got the latest version of Android at right now on smartphones it's Android 13 but this one has Android 12 all your other digital audio players come with like Android 10 so this has a step up or a yeah a, an advantage on that so that's pretty much it so this is what we get we get the player we get a case we get an extra tempered glass screen protector and manuals and then you get the cable so I will see you guys in a few for the full review and through the magic of video editing you guys are going to see it right now okay so for specs and features the main specs and features the number one feature that got me with this high BR6 or that sold me onto the high BR6 is number one it has the fastest processor out there right now for any digital audio player and that's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 and it also is it has the latest version of Android out of all the other music players now I don't know where I seen it or if I read it in a forums or in another review or watched it in another review but someone had commented that because the other players usually they have like Android 10 or Android 11 and they're saying it doesn't matter about which latest version of Android because these are not smartphones it might matter for smartphones but it doesn't matter for a digital audio player and I'm sorry whoever you are but you do want the latest operating system since most of these I'm not sure about this it, may, it might be a cut down version of Android but most of the bigger music players run a version of Android and so they obviously don't know their operating systems or the Linux kernel in general so let me tell you guys why it's important to have the latest operating system not just for smartphones but for something like this a digital audio player and also for computers in general number one with the latest operating system especially with Linux you'll get the latest kernel so the operating system and the kernel is what basically tells the hardware what to do and how to be efficient or how to use that power that's in your like in this case the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 chip how to go about doing tasks like how to play the music how to do the Wi-Fi what's the standby and everything like that and if you have the latest operating system you'll have a more efficient operating system which means you should get better battery life and number two security features that come with like your latest operating system and kernel especially with like if you're using the Google Play Store to download apps and also more app compatibility um, I lost count so yes it is very important to have the latest operating system and not just for smartphones when 
I still had my Galaxy S21 Ultra. It was released with Android 11 and then it got upgraded to Android 12 and now it has Android 13 and I noticed that with every Android system update or Android version update the phone felt faster even though it wasn't it felt just as fast if not faster than the first day I got it and it also had better battery life with the newer Android update and that's the same thing you're going to get on these Android slash type music players digital audio players because even though they're not a phone they still have the same chipset as you would have this this probably has the same chipset as on a like probably say a, a low or a budget phone maybe like a samsung a series or something like that or some like older or, or budget motorola phones smartphones and things like that it doesn't have like the top tier like you would say like for like my galaxy s23 ultra has the qualcomm snapdragon 8th gen 2 this just has a snapdragon 665 but it's the fastest for any digital audio players right now pair that snapdragon 665 chipset with the newest version of android and you just have a more fluid and faster running and quite possibly a better battery saving more efficient operating system and digital audio player because the only thing that separates these from a smartphone is your digital audio players don't have the radio bands or the radio chipset to make phone calls and that's about it that's the only difference and then of course you know most of your new um smartphones thank you samsung for they get rid of they got rid of the headphone jack and i really sad about lg not making their smartphones no more because lg would always have built in saber decks into their smartphones with the headphone jack i will probably be comparing this also to the my lg v60 in sound department so yes Having the very latest version of Android is also important, not just to smartphones, but also to your Android-based digital music players. Okay, other specs and features. As far as power goes, maximum power is 125 milliwatt hour in with the 3.5 connector and with the balance connector you get 405 milliwatts of power so that's probably why i am going to do a follow-up with this after i get my 4.5 adapter or 4.4 uh, adapter right here this thing frequency response of the uh high br6 I'm just going to say R63 instead of high BR6 Gen 3 is 20 hertz to 45 kilohertz. So what does that mean? Well, in human hearing, you can only go from 20 to 20, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So anything over 40 kilohertz is like high res or high definition. That means it's better than CD quality. If you have, if you, people still own those nowadays, music CDs. So for DAX, it has dual Saber ES. 9038Q to M Saber Dex. For Wi Fi, it's got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz dual band Wi Fi. It comes with Bluetooth 5.0 and the USB C is USB C 3.1. For your display, you get a 5 inch 16.8 million colors IPS panel 1280 by 720. For RAM, you get 4 gigabytes of RAM. That's crazy how this has 4 gigabytes of RAM. I remember my first. One of my very first Android phones, Droid Bionic, only had one gigabyte of RAM. And it has uh, 64 gigabytes of built-in storage, where this one did not have any kind of built-in storage. You have to add your own. And for the micro SD card expansion right here on the side, you can add up to two terabytes if you can find one. And if you can find a two terabyte micro SD card slot, that's affordable. And it comes in two colors. It, um, it comes in black and gunmetal gray. And I got the gunmetal gray. And the chassis material or the build is made of all aluminum and Gorilla Glass on the front and back. The dimensions is 129.4 by 73.1 by 15.6 millimeters. And the weight is uh, 250 grams. Uh, battery capacity is 4,500 milliamp hours. And charging is uh, 12 volt 1.8 amps or 5 volt 0.5 amps. So that's the uh, specs and features. And I should have uh, started them up at the same time so you guys could see how fast they connect. But one of the main reasons why I got the Hybe R3 Pro is like on this one, you guys can see on the R3, okay, now it just connected. But sometimes on this, especially why I got this over the Pioneer that I have, 
I still have, but I don't use as much. It's because of the connectivity issues that I get sometimes with some of these music players that they'll lose connection while I'm listening to my music, and that just ruins the whole vibe. So right now it says it's still strong, but when you get to title and to log in, after the latest firmware, the last two firmware updates, you have to do this now, and that's a pain in the ass. I don't know why, it, I don't know if it's high B or it's because of title and their, you know, those stupid uh, copyright laws and stuff, but you have to scan to this every time on your smartphone and then log into your smartphone before you can use it, before you can use title. Whereas now, on this one, you could just go to title and you don't, and, and as long as you've been logged in, you'll stay logged in and you don't have to worry about doing this stupid crap right here and that's so annoying it, it, it's really annoying man i i don't like what they what they've done with that and right here as you can see the connection is really strong as, as well as for bluetooth and wi-fi and yeah so this is just another android operating system and the other thing i like with the uh, the new high br6 you see this one is not android so for me like i haven't used it in a bit and i'm already starting to forget how to use it is the the layout and the operating system is just for me for me is not as intuitive as it is with android because i i have a smartphone android smartphone this layout is much more intuitive for me to to use and it's a much faster and quicker layout so that's the two big reasons um having to sign in and qr code with title every time i want to use it and then just in general the I don't know what they did with the firmware updates, but it's made it a little slower. It didn't get any faster. The connectivity too is uh, see is not as strong. See sometimes that those bars for Wi-Fi will drop, whereas this one, it's always a strong connection. So we'll talk about that in the uh, connectivity section. But that's the main reason the that and also the larger screen. And because see just like a smartphone, you get your notifications up here. It's basically a smartphone without the radio chipset and uh, all these digital audio, Android digital audio players are basically just your smartphone without the radio chipset and a better, you know, built-in headphone audio connectors and things like that, wired connectors. And then the other thing that I like with this R6 III over the Hi-B R3 Pro is that this is basically how it looks. This is the, your layout. You can't customize, like you can't have wallpapers. This is high OS, how it looks. And this is how high OS would be probably for the other music players or the other companies that make music players that use high OS. Whereas this one, this is Android 12. And just like on your smartphone, if you have an Android smartphone, it's got a lot of these customizations and it has the drop down bar for your certain features and and things like of that nature for your settings like quick settings like internet bluetooth and others and yeah it's just way more e easier for me and you can also have different wallpapers like right now i have my alienware wallpaper that i use also on my desktop and on my smartphone the operating system on this is way just for android in general if you own an android phone it's just more customizable than the high, plain basic high B OS right here. Like if I get to, if I go to here or if I go to here to play, to try to play tracks, like at first, like if you're a newbie, you wouldn't know how to like, Oh shoot. Like, how do I get to like an Android? You would swipe up and then, you know, go, get out of there on this one. You'd have to do a swipe right to go back to that menu system right there. So it's just more, for me, it's more intuitive and easier to use and also more customizable than the Hi-B OS that comes with the Hi-B R3 Pro. And again, the bigger screen and the better connectivity, way stronger connectivity. That's for both wireless and Bluetooth. So let's talk about the display. So this display in Android actually has auto rotate, as you guys can see. But anyways, it's a five inch diagonal. 1280 by 720p IPS display and it's good it's decent it does the job compared to all my other music players that I've had 
like my Pioneer and this one. It's a way bigger, way better display and better responsive display. With my Pioneer or this, my Pioneer was, I don't even think was a touch screen. My Pioneer DAP. This one is a touch screen, but you can't play videos on it. So that's that. Now compared to other video players in its price range, I'd say it's about in line with all those other ones as far as like the resolution of 720p and colors and things like that although this dude does tend to go on the colder side like bluish tint on a lot of uh, images and this is where you can see where the price reduction came from in that much more better much more affordable price tag this is 499 if i didn't, didn't already mention and that's one of the cheapest audio players under a thousand dollars in this price range with the five inch screen with the latest technology so as far as other digital media players go digital audio players go most of them fall into this range under a thousand dollars or under like five hundred dollars you're going to get like a 720p screen there's some that are going to be 1080 but not not many i really can't name one off the bat maybe the feel m11 but the feel m11 i believe is like six hundred dollars and it's not going to compare to like the display of my Samsung S23 Ultra right here. And this is only in, they're both in adaptive brightness, but with the adaptive brightness turned on, the Samsung is probably at 70% brightness. Whereas this gets to, as you can see, it's on full brightness right now. And as far as like other smartphones I have closest in size would be my LG V35. The V35 has, I believe, a 5.8 inch screen diagonal. Whereas the, the Ultra right here has a 6.8. So this is the closest it comes to as far as in size. The LG is also a 1440p screen. It's actually a much sharper screen pixels per inch over the uh, Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra right here. And the LG is also, the LG right here is also at its maximum brightness as you can see. And if we compare them, you can tell the LG is, I don't know if you guys can actually till from watching it on your video through what I shot through the camera and then going on to YouTube but this is sharper it's brighter and it's an OLED screen this is a P -O -P AMOLED screen from LG while this is an IPS screen so you're gonna get more color saturation uh, with an OLED screen you're gonna get more vivid colors and you're gonna get deeper blacks and I mentioned for watching videos on this believe it or not it's pretty good it's okay but I don't really recommend watching videos with this screen due to the latency issues that we will talk about more in the other section. So that is the display of the Hybe Hibi R63. So if you guys saw the unboxing and uh, just the accessories, it didn't come with much. It just came with your basic cables and things like that. But I was hoping the case that it would come with wouldn't be this dark like smoke tinted case. It would be a crystal clear case so I can show off that titanium gray color just like uh where's my s23 ultra like my s23 ultra if you guys haven't seen my videos on this channel for some of the cases I always get clear cases mostly and because they can show off the look of the smartphone or they can show off the look of the skin that I put onto the smartphone like on this one is a clear case and I made my own carbon fiber skin for it and so I was hoping they would have a clear case for this. But now it's kind of growing on me with this type of case. First of all, I like how it's, it makes the, the player much easier to grip and hold on to. And also, remember, this phone, the front and the back is all glass. So you're going to, even the aluminum frame, you're going to collect a lot of fingerprints. And this keeps you from smudging up the phone Although you will smudge up the case. The case does collect some fingerprints here and, here and there. And it's clear enough that the uh, the titanium gray color now looks like a, it has a copperish type. Or even like a, yeah, a gold copperish type of look. Which I don't really mind now. It's kind of grown on me. But then when I go to the ports and I see this. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, that's the color. Going over the ports... Here on the bottom, you have your balance line out and, and just standard line out. You have your Type-C for charging and for transfers. And then you have your regular output for your headphones and the uh, 
4.4 balanced output for headphones. So if you're going to use headphones, you would use these two right here. And the line out ones are if you were to connect it to like external speakers, like wired speakers, then use these two. And then the other port is the SD card slot right there. And this is the only negative I don't like with the case because once you have the case on, that's it. If you want to have access and like switch up your SD cards, micro SD cards here and there, you can't do it unless you remove the case again. So it's kind of a pain in the ass for that. But since like I don't really have a very large collection of music nowadays on micro SD card form, I mainly listen to Tidal a lot for listening to music then this becomes a non-factor even though i do have a 64 gigabyte sd card in here so all all in all with the built-in 64 gigs of ram or rom of storage and then the 64 gigs on the external s micro sd card slot i have a total of 128 gigs of storage well give or take right because the operating system i believe is probably like takes up one gig we can find out because this is like android right so i can go here okay so i can go to settings and storage and as you can see the whole operating system for android 12 and whatever hi puts in there built in takes up 12 gigabytes of your 64 gigs of uh, storage space and then i have another 2.9 gigabytes of apps installed and then i don't know what this is 1.6 gigabytes audio and then images is 129 megabytes documents another 52 megabytes and things like that so there you go so let's talk about the the connectivity the connectivity on this is really good very very good as long as you're in line of sight you you can stand like with wireless headphones, not with wired, but with what I mean, wired headphone connectivity. Come on, man. That's a given, right? You're connected. You're wired. You're good. It's you're not going to lose connectivity unless you accidentally unplug your headphones. But I'm talking about wireless connectivity like Blue with Bluetooth 5.0. I used it with uh, I paired this with my Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro because the Liberty 3 Pros uses can use LDAC and also with my newer Tozo X1 earbuds. I believe that's what they're called, Golden X1s. And as long as uh, within line of sight and I'm not using LDAC, the connection is very strong. Never had a drop connection. It's only when I use a higher resolution format like LDAC and then I go from room to room and I leave this in one room and then go take the earbuds in another room or the headphones, my wireless headphones. Uh, I also paired it, this with the, my Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro. Then that's when I start getting like interference and here and there. So what I mean by interference is like when you're listening to music, it'll randomly like stop and then it'll play again. So it's not like smooth and continuous. So if you want smooth and continuous, be within line of sight. And since we're talking about connectivity with this uh, High Beat R6 3 Gen 3, if you're watching videos, on YouTube or I actually have Amazon Prime <laughs> I was able to watch the first part of Top Gun with this uh, video with the Prime video on here when you try to put Netflix in here it says it's not compatible Disney Plus Hulu is not compatible YouTube and Prime are probably two of the only like video watching apps that you can install onto the player and watching YouTube if you don't, if you're not watching like music videos or talking head videos or action videos, then it shouldn't be that bad. But if you're watching like music or talking head or action videos, there is a lot of latency with the YouTube app. Even when wired, I noticed that there's latency with the prime video app. It's not as bad, but you, it's there. You can notice it if you really like really look for it, you will notice a little bit of latency, a little bit of lag. And uh, the my Tozo X1 has a like a, a gamer mode to reduce the latency, but that does not work as good, especially with YouTube. You're still going to get latency when you're watching YouTube videos on this thing. OK, yeah, you're going to get all kinds of latency where I couldn't like watch it with the with the headphones on or even at all, period uh, with like I said, with the Prime Video, it's not as bad, but you could still notice it. So if you're going to use this, just use it for music and nothing else. And use it for like either with your stored music library or with like Tidal or 
Amazon Music or uh, YouTube. I think YouTube has music, although I don't know. I don't, I don't really use it. I have Amazon. I think I have Amazon high res music and I don't even use that one. I just strictly use Tidal just because I pay in a lot more for the Tidal service. I, I pay like $20 a month for Tidal. I think for the high high hi fi uh, um, subscription. So I'm going to use Tidal and get the most out of it with Amazon. I think the Amazon Prime music is part of my Amazon Prime membership. And same thing with YouTube. And then uh, I don't really use what is the biggest music service? I think it's Spotify, right? I don't use Spotify. I do have a Spotify account, but. Yeah, I stopped using Spotify when I got my title subscription because it, to me, I don't know about you guys, but to me, it was very noticeable in the quality of the sound between going from title high res or hi fi audio format to regular like MP3 formats that they would probably have on Spotify. Although Spotify does have now, you can correct me if I'm wrong, they do have high res audio now on Spotify. Spotify, right? You can also install, I believe, the other music services like I want to say, what are the other ones like Deezer? Although I've never used Deezer, I know it's in there that you can use it. It's it's in uh it's on uh Hybe's website that you can use it. See, yep. So you can download and install the Deezer app. There you go. X S X M Amazon Music. There's Spotify right there. Um, I do have Audible. Yeah, that's another one. So if you're not using Tidal, you can use Audible too for listening to like your audiobooks and podcasts. And it's really good for that too. It sounds really good for that. So what are we waiting for? Right? Let's talk about the sound before this video gets too long. Okay, so here's, here's a reason why I don't like to do my review of certain products that same day until I've had time to listen to it because I'm going to be straight out honest with you guys. When I first heard this, I was like, man, this does not sound that much better than my IB R3 Pro. It took me a while and I was like, did I just waste money from going from this one to this one as far as for sound? And the answer to that was no, not really, because it's a different type of sound. And here's what I'm talking about. Um, the, the first thing I do when I get a different audio player or, a, or a amp is, uh, I'll plug it in to these bad boys, my favorite headphones of the time at this time until I find something better or, but it's probably going to be <laughs> way more expensive. I have been thinking about getting the, uh, Meze 109 pros. I'm seriously thinking about those getting those, but we'll see. Or even like bump up to the Ananda's. Which, uh, in some reviews, they say that Anandas are the big brother to the Sundaras. And so here's the Sundaras. And Sundara means, like, beautiful music or something. And I, that's that's what it is with this. And so every time I get a new amp or a new digital audio player, I always plug it into this. Because that's my this is my reference for now to see how good one of these devices will compare to one another. Or even, like, on my LG V60 right here which can double <laughs> as a digital audio player this this phone is amazing and this is what that's why i did, never wanted to trade this in even when i got my s21 ultra i decided to keep it because it works amazingly good as a digital audio player so if i had to just pick one device to go on vacation and that takes good pictures that also works as one of these it would be this the thing with this is uh i still need a portable DAC amp to run this to their best potential. On Hi-Fi Men's website, they say they're pretty easy to drive, or at least for planars. They are, but for most of us, and I'm probably partially deaf already from years of listening to music, I need my music in higher volumes. The LG V60 cannot drive it loud enough. And this one, the first time I, it was on, and I listened to it with my Sundaras, I was wondering why it was it didn't seem as loud as the uh Hi-B R3 Pro. This little music player has some punch to it. And I can listen to the Hi-Fi Mansundaras with the Hi-B R3 Pro in unbalanced mode. Not in balanced mode. It has more power in balanced mode. And we all know that for if well if you don't know, most digital audio players have more power in the balanced mode than the unbalanced mode. And so just in unbalanced mode 
or the regular 3.5 millimeter connection. I didn't feel like it was getting loud enough and so I was getting kind of disappointed and worried that I wasted my money. And then I saw this gain. See low, middle and high, I put it to high just so I can get that sound. And the one thing with Saber decks is uh, Saber decks tend to lean more towards the brighter side uh, and more clarity side. The Hi-B R3 Pro right here comes with Cirrus Logic decks unless you get the Hi-B R3 Pro Saber Edition. They have two versions of the R3 Pro. I have the regular R3 Pro and then there's a Saber Edition. And I, I love the sound with the Cirrus Logic amps. They're just, it, the Cirrus, Cirrus Logic amps are just, gives you a warmer sound. The sound, a more bassier sound compared to the Saber decks. This thing, if you guys can't see, let's, let's go to settings, equalizer. You guys see this? This is how I always listen to the Hi-B R3 Pro in just this basic settings. Even MSEB. Did I change this? I think, I guess I did. But normally I don't, I didn't need to change the MSEB settings on the Hi-B R3 Pro like I had to do with this one. I had to tweak the MSB settings on this more so than on this. Although now I'm, I'm getting used to the sound a little bit more. So I then I, I tweaked it back. The, and the MSEB, this is the one setting that I love about Hi-B players or players with Hi-B OS be, that some others don't have because if you're not really in tuned and you don't really know what all this thing is with equalizers like this part 31 hertz 62 hertz 125 hertz 250 hertz 500 hertz it, it looks like a strange language to you alien language and stuff then just go to this the MSEB because it's basically the equalizer simplified and as you can see with here it'll say overall temperature you want cool or bright sound into your music. You want bass extension, bass texture, no thickness, and things like that, right? That is the one thing I really love about Hi-B or, um, or the Hi-B OS or op, um, digital audio players that have the Hi-B OS is they have that. So we're going to go back here to audio settings. And as you can see, this... I uh, forgot to mention it in the settings. Uh, for amplifier operation, you have class A and class AB. I didn't really notice the difference. Class A is supposed to make it sound, you can correct me in the comments section, it's supposed to be for higher output and f with uh, less distortion. Or you have class AB that uses that like uses both of your amp amplifier, the A and B, and it picks which one is the best to use for a certain type of headphones and stuff like that. I just kept it class A. I think uh, default is class A B to help you save battery. I just kept it on class A. And uh, we'll talk about that in battery. But now let's go back to MSEB right here. So I did tweak it a little bit. Just si almost similar to this. But not by much. Because once you start tweaking things you will notice like the temperature. If I make the temperature more warmer then I lose a little bit of sound stage. Same thing with uh, bass extension and things like that. So... You can really play around with it and see where you want your sound exactly much easier than the regular equalizer with MSEB. And that's the one thing I love about the Hi-B OS or digital audio players that have the Hi-B OS. So sound. Once I got that all straightened out and fixed and then it's probably also because I, I, was, I was catching a cold. And excuse me uh, if I didn't mention it before. If I do sound stuffy, it's because I had a cold about a week ago and I'm still kind of congested. But when you have a cold or there are certain times, like if you're sick, if you have a cold or a certain time of day, your hearing might be different than another time of day or it can vary from day to day. I kid you not. It's actual science to that. And so I had to wait until like when I got really better from the cold and I didn't feel as stuffy and everything that I go, hmm. Okay, I do notice the difference in the sound. I could pick up more details with my Sundara. And I, I didn't just test it out with the Sundara, but I tested it out with all my other um, headphones that I reviewed for my channel. But the Sundara is always the first go-to. And I noticed more details, a bigger sound stage on the Sundara than when using this thing right here, the Hi-B R3 Pro, but not by much. To be quite honest, if I'm going to be saying like, is it an extra $300 much more? Um, probably not. And that's the big 
takeaway, right? So whatever I said in my review on the Hi-B R3 Pro can go same thing with the Hi-B R R6 III. Once you get it tuned properly, you're going to get plenty of bass. It's going to drive your planar headphones like this without needing another amplifier or a DAC amp, portable DAC amp, or a, a DAC amp in general. And you're going to get really good sounding or great sounding music as long as the quality of your music is good also. If you have crappy MP3s uh, saved up onto your storage, don't expect the any kind of high-res digital audio player. I don't care if you have like the most expensive digital audio players out there right now, like say the Astell and Kern SP3000 or the Sony WM1ZM2, you're still not going to get great or good sounding music if your storage library has like just crappy MP3 downloads <laughs> like what I used to do back in the days. But now it's not legal anymore. You're not supposed to do that. With, uh, you know, the Napster days and things like that, when you downloaded music off the P2P networks. So yeah, I don't have any good music stored up in high resolution format like that. And that's why I use Tidal uh, with the, the high res or hi-fi subscription so I can get that good music. And I don't work for Tidal. Like I'm not going to endorse any company that I don't really like or whatever. And I don't work for Tidal, but I do like their the quality of their music. Do I think they're a little expensive? <laughs> yeah. And do I think they have too many restrictions sometimes? Yes. But they're the only ones that I can think of at, the, at this moment that have the largest library of um, high-res audio, high-res streaming service, high-res music. So that's why I keep them around. And so whatever I said about the Hi-B R3 Pro, like I said, well, you can put it onto this one just amplified a little bit not by much but but a little bit they're both very good in sound quality although starting off out of the box this will sound a little bit more warmer and more a little bit bassier because of that cirrus logic chip the saber deck on this out of the box you're going to get a brighter sound a more wider sound stage and uh more clarity but again not by much and it, it like i said it depends on a person's ears one reviewer might say hey this is a really good audio player or hey these headphones are really good they're very bassy another reviewer is going to say the total exact opposite man there's not enough bass on these headphones there's not enough bass on this digital audio player so the best thing to do and I, that i recommend is buy the player yourself from a trusted website that you can that has a very good return policy and if you don't like the sound you can return it with no issues like for me amazon did i mention the price on this we'll talk about that in the in the summary um yeah so that's it for the sound it's a great sounding digital audio player especially if i can compare it to this but not by much not by much but that's the sound let's talk about the battery life and then we'll conclude Battery life on the High B R3 Pro with its 4,500 milliamp hour battery. That's only 500 milliamp hours less than the LG V60 and the uh, S23 Ultra right here. That 4,500 milliamp hours. Using this in the first week. Well, it is my first week. It's a little over a week now. Using it in the first week with like around average listening time for most days is like an hour and a half to two hours because I have other things I have to do. I can't listen to music as long as I used to. It lasted me four days until it got down to like, I want to say 30 or 25% and then I charged it back up because I didn't want to risk uh, running out of power when I would listen to it again. So battery life is not bad with uh, you know around average one and a half to two hours of usage and the screen at adaptive brightness. The screen is at adaptive brightness and the volumes that I usually listen to, depending on the tracks depending if they're high res tracks or not i would go between like regular tracks i have to crank it up a little bit if they're not high res tracks if they're high res tracks they're, they they can get pretty loud so i would have to bring it down to like 70 percent with the sundaris and with my other headphones too what other headphones uh my audio technica solid bass my emotiva that i've yet to do a review on my emotiva uh graphene one headphones and my sivga SV04 and also my Fostex headphones. Um, my Fostex uh, MP20 RK. You you guys will see it in the description in, in the video. I'll put it in because I, I I forget here and there every now and then. 
So no, I have no problems with the battery life on this. It's good enough for me. For other, if you watch other reviews and they compare it with other digital audio players, they might say it's just average. But see, that's the thing. That 4,500 milliamp hour battery paired with Android 12 and one and a half to two hours of usage every day and with uh, adaptive screen brightness lasted me four full days, almost five days. It probably would have lasted five days because I still had like 25 or 30 percent of battery left when I started charging it up again. That's what I mean by having efficiency with the operating system. So this as far as for battery life, if you're talking about like the digital audio players in the uh, over between the 500 to under 1000 range, then yeah, this has a uh, like middle uh, middle of the specs for battery there's others that could probably have better battery life but that they won't have all the features that this will have so with that uh, let's conclude okay let's wrap up this video this is our look at the Hybe Hibby R6 3 R6 Gen 3 and let's go over the pros first it's got the fastest processor on any player today, um, I believe any, uh, because it's the most recently launched. This was just launched um, about a month, almost a month ago now. So it's only a month old in like launch date or in when it came to market compared to the, some of the other play, players or some of the other players near its price range. So it's got the latest and fastest processor. That's one. It's got the latest Android operating system that's number two and if you, go, you guys don't think that's important go back to the beginning of this video number three it's got a very fast and responsive touch display and that's probably because of the newer Android number four it's got pretty good battery life and then number five is that price there's nothing in this $500 499 price range that comes close to the specs and all the features that this high BR6 Pro has compared to some of its competitors cons again cons being the display it could have been a 1080p instead of a 720p display. I mean, the display for this size, you can't really notice between 1080 and 720. The, my main complaint about the display or about the player in general is the, you can't really use it as a, as a video watching device, like say for watching a uh, prime video and YouTube and things like that, because there's too much latency, even with wired headphones. And there's even more latency with wireless earbuds or headphones. And I've tested this out with a few number of headphones now. Starting with the wired ones, I tested it out, like I said, with my Sundara, Hi-Fi Man Sundara, my Audio-Technica Solid Bass, my Fostex MP20s, my Emotiva GR1 Graphene 1 headphones, the Sivga SV02 headphones, and my Bear Dynamic Custom 1 Pro headphones. So that's six wired headphones right there. As far as wireless goes, I tested it out with three of my latest wireless headphones or earbuds that have the Bluetooth 5.0 or, or better with the LDAC uh, high-res streaming playability. And those three were the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro with LDAC and high-res wireless support. My Soundcore Life View 30, I believe. No, Q, Life Q35. And then the latest one is the Tozo Golden X1. And the Golden X1 from Tozo also has uh, what the two sound cord devices or two sound cord headphones don't have. It's called gaming mode. And gaming mode is supposed to reduce latency. It reduced it to where I can watch some videos on Amazon pretty well, but not on YouTube. And it didn't reduce it by much. You could still tell a little bit of latency going on there. I don't know what it is with YouTube, why the latency is so slow on YouTube compared to Amazon Prime. I did notice if I did play the YouTube videos in its lowest resolution, like 480p versus like the 720p, there's less um, latency, but then it doesn't look as good either in 480 versus 720. And between 480 and 720 on a five inch screen, you can tell the difference because 480 is not high def, high HD no more. I believe it's just like regular broadcast quality, SD quality, standard quality, standard definition. So that's the number one thing right there. And that's, that was my biggest thing with it. So if you plan to use this high BR6 3 as a video player, I don't recommend it. Number two is with that same thing, most video watching apps are not compatible with this. You can tell, like for me, it's, it was very limited. I only got it to install Prime Video and YouTube, but the other major ones like Hulu or Hulu Plus, uh, Disney Plus, 
um, HBO, was it HBO? HBO Max, um, at least at this time. And uh, what's the other one? Apple TV uh, does not work on this. But as far as music streaming services go, or music streaming apps, it's compatible with almost all of them. So that's a plus. So yeah, was that number two? The display and the lagginess? You could say the display. Yeah, well, let's just say it's not necessarily the display, but like lagginess, latency when watching videos. And then incompatibility with some of the video watching apps. And then number three, if I were to nitpick, is that out of the box, at least for me it sounded a little bright but again that's when I was sick and um, I was really stuffy back then so I don't know if it was that because the, as I the more I listened to it the more it started to sound good if not way better than the IV R3 Pro right here and I think that's just the thing with Saber decks the Saber decks you are usually are more brighter but with that brightness you also get more clarity and a bigger sound stage and the other thing if I'm gonna be nitpicky is uh that for having Android 12 and the latest Snapdragon 665, I probably could have, I wish the the battery life would have been just a bit better. It's not bad. It's like I said, it's good compared to its competitors, but it's not the greatest. So let's say I do listen to it in louder volumes and more than two hours a day and at full brightness with the screen, then it probably wouldn't last me the four days that I had with it. So those were, were the cons. So overall, here's how it's going to go. Do I recommend this? If you're, if this is going to be your first digital audio player purchase, I highly recommend it. There's nothing in this price range under $500. Well, technically it's going to be $500 with tax, a little more than 500 with all the features that it comes with. When the first R6 was launched, I believe the first high BR6, the Gen 1, was like $699, maybe $799. I'm not sure. And uh, this high BR6, R3 Pro when it first launched it was anywhere from like 350 to 399 dollars and now you can get this well I don't know if if the exact one like this but the Saber edition you can get it for 249 dollars I believe they're all sold out of the original this one the regular R3 Pro so if you already have the R3 Pro not the Saber edition because I can't speak for the Saber edition since I, since I don't own it do I recommend it as an upgrade over this. I could say yes only if you're not happy with the sound of this or the output it gets this will give you more output especially I'm gonna go with that if I'm gonna get go with the 4.4 balance connector and then the other thing is if you're tired like me of having to do the QR code and signing into title every time and I think it's only title because title is the only thing is the only streaming app that I use so I, I wouldn't know if it's for any of the other ones so faster connectivity stronger connectivity connectivity over the uh, high BR R3 Pro it's a for me at least with with Android 12 it's a better more intuitive UI than high B OS and it's easier for me to actually it's way easier because I already know Android and if you already have an Android phone then you will like the UI this is just basically stock Android it's not you know Samsung's version of Android or Oppo or Huawei or whatever the other companies that make Android phones with their own skins it's basically a Google Pixel phone without the radios and I dare you to get a Google Pixel phone that has this much as far as in sound quality with the headphones jack you can't get any smartphones nowadays especially flagship smartphones with this kind of um audio playing capability so i do recommend it even as an upgrade if you guys are interested in this high-res digital audio player please use the links in my description as it does help out my channel and my charity the wounded warrior project and who knows maybe you guys will be helping me get a new headphone set Maybe the Meze 109 Pros that I'm really interested in to help me get that to review for this channel. And uh, once again, I'd like to apologize if I sound stuffy or nasally. I'm still getting over my cold. So that is our look and my review of the High B R6 III. Or is it Hibby R6 III? Or is it High B R6 Gen 3? Anyways, if there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments section and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. I don't see my, any notifications for comments from you guys in the video. So probably I'll get back to you later rather than sooner, but I will get back to you. And if you guys have made it this far, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you guys have found this video helpful and informative, please like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at The Workout Geek for all my latest happenings and great work.
workout tips. Till next time, everybody, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you soon for another video. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care.